take you further into the Vietnam conflict. I'm joined by Marilyn Young. She's a professor at New York University and author of The Vietnam Wars, 1945 to 1990. Thank you so much for being here with us. We Your appreciate pleasure. your time. You know, looking back, talk about some of the major mistakes made by the United States in Vietnam. And obviously some lessons were learned, but tell us about some of the lessons not that many. were not. Well, the, the major mistakes was your first question. The first major mistake was not responding to Ho Chi Minh's letters to President Truman in 1945, saying, how about helping us become an independent country, unified, uh, in accord with the Atlantic Charter, which promised self-determination to all people. So that's the first mistake. Those letters, six of them, I think, were never responded to. The second mistake was supporting the French. Uh, which the United States did from 1945 to 1954. The third big mistake was helping, um, encouraging, abetting, and aiding uh, the uh, government of No Dinh Tiem to violate the Geneva Accords, accords which I think the United States never intended to fully, um, um, never signed, and never intended to follow. Those accords, uh, which were reached with the help of the People's Republic of China and the Soviet Union, uh, allowed for elections within six months, within two years. Ho Chi Minh had wanted six months. Okay, two years. He agreed to two years. Then it was violated. There were no elections. Uh, instead, Diem ran his own election, utterly fraudulent, uh, and established the Republic of Vietnam. So that's the first series. I, I would say the biggest mistake was getting involved in Vietnam to begin with. That's the major mistake. Decades later, talk about some of the lingering effects on the, of this war on the population in Vietnam. Well, the lingering effects include Agent Orange, which continues to poison uh, ground soil and to cause horrific birth defects. So that's one. The second is remaining uh, ordinance, unexploded ordinance. Uh, which kills people, it was a much greater a while ago, but about 100 a year die. Uh, and that ordinance is unexploded as well in Cambodia and in Laos. Uh, Laos was even more, I think, than, than Vietnam, but throughout Indochina. There's unexploded ordinance, which regularly kills people. Um, then there's just the loss of that many people. Um, Vietnamese themselves don't talk about it very much. It's a much younger population, and the whole intent is to rebuild and to move on. Nevertheless, there is nobody in that country who does not have in his family losses on both sides, that of the South Vietnamese uh, Saigon government and, of course, the National Liberation Front and the government of North Vietnam, as it was then. <clears throat> so the losses are all through the country, and they're, they continue in terms of Agent Orange, for which the United States is directly involved and has never given sufficient funding to uh, deal with. I think something like some pathetic figure like $20 million. I believe the Pentagon is paying, is, is spending far more, more money commemorating the anniversary of the war than the United States has ever contributed to helping Vietnam in any of the war-related effects of that American war. Maybe it's hard to compare, not fair to compare, but you look at how long this conflict lasted and you look at some of what's happening around the world today. Do you think we could see another war or conflict last as long as what happened there? Well, it has lasted that long. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have lasted longer. Afghanistan is 13 years or something now. The, what has been learned, I think, is that the more you separate the American public from the American projection of military force, the more easily you can use that force. So today we have a professional army. The majority of the population, the overwhelming majority of the population, is protected from having to do military service. In Vietnam, there was a draft. And the draft affected not the entire country, but by 1971, when there was a lottery, it began to affect all young men. Uh, then in 73, the draft was eliminated. And now a professional army. So that's right away a separation. Less than 1% of the population serves. Uh, so a professional army separate from the citizenry. Then you control the media. Uh, and the media was under serious control in both Afghanistan and Iraq through the use of the embedded reporter. An embedded reporter is relying on the military 
in which he or she is embedded to protect them. So it's very hard to separate yourself from what the, the actual mission is. Third, the development of drones. And the drones mean that the United States can target both individuals and groups of people in total safety. No American dies.